Hi there, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AlloveyTutors.com and in this video we're going to be looking at variable oxidation state but this time we're going to be looking at copper chemistry. So copper is one of these elements that's used quite a lot, particularly in things like electrical wiring in particular as it's a really good conductor of electricity. But we also are going to look at the copper solutions as well um, and look at the reactions. So we're going to look at some reduction reactions, a little bit look at um, disproportionation a bit of ligand substitution and reactions with ammonia as well. Okay, so we're going to look at um, the different forms that copper can exist in. Now, copper can exist as obviously as a metal, which is the uh, like a, a brown shiny metal. When in powder form, it's pink. Um, but uh, obviously, as an element, it has an oxidation state of zero. And we're also going to look at uh, copper plus as well. And uh, copper one plus is a white solid, and I'll come on to why it's white in a minute as well. And we're going to look at copper 2 plus, which is a 2 plus oxidation state or oxidation state of plus 2. Uh, and it's normally a blue solution when dissolved in water. Okay, we'll just come back to that copper 1 plus. Uh, now, the reason why copper 1 plus is white uh, is because it has a full D subshell. And I've drawn the um, electron arrangement down here at the bottom. Now, uh, remember, when you have a copper, when you have any transition metal compound, uh, when you bond ligands to it, we get this d orbital splitting. Now, if you're not sure what I'm talking about uh, with regards to d orbital splitting, there is a video that looks into that. If you just click on the link below, uh, you can have a look at that one there. Um, but I'll assume that you know what it means. Uh, and effectively, you can see here that our d orbital has split um, and it's completely full. That means we can't transition, or we can't, we can't transist uh, an electron from here up to here because this one's full as well. And because we don't have that ability to move the electrons between the two orbitals, we effectively get a color that's just white. Uh, and that's the same with any transition metal um, that has this uh, set up here, whether it's full or even empty for that matter as well, that would give the same effect. So in this case, copper one plus is white solid. However, copper two, because we remove an electron um, from another electron to form copper two, then we have a space, we have a vacancy in the upper orbital, so that means that uh, it will form a coloured solution, and in this case it's blue. Okay, so we're just going to look at some um, reactions here. Now, um, copper can be extracted, or uh, well, copper can re be reacted with a more electropositive element. So, for example, this could be zinc. And we can take copper solution, uh, which is Cu2+, plus, like copper sulfate, for example, dissolved in water would form the copper hexa aqua ion complex. Um, and this, when reacted with a bit of zinc, put it in the flask, swirl it around, uh, and we'll effectively get copper deposits uh, and some zinc uh, 2 plus ions as well. Now, this might be quite useful because actually uh, we can use another metal like iron, for example. Iron would work with this. Uh, and we can use scrap iron. Um, and we can use an ore, for example, if it was like copper ore and it didn't have a lot of copper in it. It was very, very limited in, the, in terms of the rock then what we can do is we can spray that with acid and uh, effectively a bacteria uh, and um, we can extract the small amount of, um, well, we can, we'll get a copper solution and then we can react that with some scrap iron, which is of low value, and we can react that with the copper 2 plus solution and we can effectively extract copper that way. So it does have its uses uh, and copper is obviously a very valuable metal, it's very expensive, it's quite sought after. Okay, so it can also uh, do what we call a disproportionation reaction, and disproportionation means that a uh, an element is simultaneously oxidized and reduced. So in this case, we've got copper two, uh, copper one plus, which has an oxidation state of plus one, and I'll write this in green. So I'll put plus one here, uh, and you can see that it's been oxidized here because it's gone up. The oxidation number has increased, but also we form copper. Um, as an element, and that's obviously reduced. So this is an example of a disproportionation reaction. Uh, and this can be evidenced from um, E0 values as well. Uh, and we can take the two E0 values of the copper uh, half cells, uh, we can combine them and form this ionic equation, and that proves that we have a disproportionation reaction. Uh, now, um, if you want to know about the E0 uh, chemistry, um, or effectively what we call electrode potential chemistry, uh, then if you just have a look at my playlist to do with electrochemistry, uh, you'll see more on that there as well. Okay, just coming on to the ligand substitution part as well. 
Uh, ligand substitution is where we can substitute, obviously, one ligand for another one. Uh, but quite often with copper chemistry, we actually change the shape of the complex as well. And you can see here that we've got a octahedral copper hexaaqua 2 plus ion here. And if we react that with chloride ions, for example, hydrochloric acid, uh, then we will form a copper um, tetrachloride complex, which is this one here. This is a tetrahedral shape. So we've changed the shape of the complex as well as the ligand. And as a result, we get a, a, a color change here as well. Um, and uh, we form six waters as well. But again, if you want to know more about this, uh, if you look on a playlist to do with transition uh, complex and solutions, uh, then you'll find uh, more information about why this works and the actual shape of it as well. Um, but yeah, this has gone from a, a blue color, then this is like a, a yellowy straw colored complex, uh, which is your copper chloride. Okay, so I've just come to the last bit, and these are reactions with ammonia. Um, now, we can take uh, a copper hexaqua solution like this here, which is a blue solution, and we can react it with a small amount of ammonia or an excess amount of ammonia, and they behave in two different ways. So when we add a small amount of ammonia, as you can see here, we've got our copper hexaqua ion, which is down here, and uh, has the two plus charge, it's in solution. We act it with a small amount of ammonia, uh, and we will form this compound here, which is copper H2O4OH2. And effectively, what's happened is the ammonia has acted as a base, and it's accepted a proton from two of the waters on the uh, two of the water ligands around the copper ion. And so, what's happened is we formed an OH minus of two of the water ligands that were H2O are now OH minus uh, because the ammonia has taken one of the protons, and it forms. NH4 plus. Uh, and this complex here, because it doesn't have a charge anymore, as you can see, because we've got two OH minuses instead of uh, six H2Os. Just put the six on the end of there. Miss that out. There you go. Uh, then effectively we form a precipitate because it's not charged and so therefore it's insoluble in the solution. So therefore we'll see a precipitate that's been formed and this is a blue precipitate. Again, if you're not sure on how this, the mechanism of this, um, if you look on the video to do with transition complex and solutions, it goes into a lot more detail about the, how this works and why it does that. Okay, if we look at excess ammonia, this time we have the same compound, as you can see here, same complex, copper hexaaqua ion. We're going to react it with an excess amount of ammonia, um, and we're going to form this, which is copper H2O2 NH3 4. So what's happened here is instead of uh, ammonia acting as a base, it's now acting as a um, ligand substitution. So it's actually acting as a full ligand. And what it's doing is it's kicking off uh, four of the waters from the copper complex. And it's effectively now um, kicked off the four waters which are down here. And obviously in its place, we now have four ammonias. And this is obviously charged still. We've got a two plus charge because both water and ammonia are neutral in charge, so therefore it has no overall effect on the, um, on the overall charge of the complex, so it's still plus two, so that's still a solution. This is a deep blue colored solution, um, whereas this one is like a paler blue, so it's like a really, like a royal blue, really deep blue. Um, and again, if the mechanism for this is uh, goes into a lot more detail on the transition, if you just have a look on the transition complex and solutions playlist, uh, you can find a little bit more detail um, about why only four waters are actually kicked off as opposed to um, as opposed to all six. Um, but that's it. Hope that helps. Bye.